Good morning. Thank you for joining us today. Hope you're doing well. Come on with us to Acts chapter 4 and Acts chapter 5. There's a, about 20 verses from one chapter to the next where a, a word keeps appearing, and the word is great. I want to talk about greatness today. Acts 4 verse 33, it begins, it says, And with great power the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. We understand what the miracles were for. They were for a witness. They were for a testimony. They were for a confirmation of the gospel that Jesus Christ had been glorified, that he had been raised from the dead, that he was Lord in Christ. But it wasn't just power, was it? No, it says it was great power. And they needed these miracles. And the Lord was doing amazing things. The Holy Spirit was doing amazing things. So that anybody with a good and noble and honest heart, they would, they would believe it. They would see the miracles and they would understand that, yes, indeed, the Lord had been resurrected and had ascended into heaven. But the verse goes on and it says there in verse 33, And great grace was upon them all. Have you ever noticed that it quantifies it? Let's ask this question. How much grace do you want in your life? A lot of folks, they'd be content with just a little bit. Do you want great grace? Well, let's ask ourselves, okay, what were the disciples like? And you look at the context and what you see is that they were self-sacrificing. They were looking out for the interests of others. They were considering others better than themselves. That's why nobody lacked. That they, they loved one another. They had fellowship with one another. They cared for one another. Great grace was upon them all. How much grace do you want in your life? Then you have the account of Ananias and Sapphira as those two are struck down. Verse 11 of Acts chapter 5 says, So great fear came upon all the church. That is the word fear there. It's where we get our word phobia. It's the same word that appears in 2 Corinthians 7 at verse 1 that says we cleanse ourselves, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. And what I wanted you to see is that grace does not necessarily exclude fear. There, there's a time to have fear. There's, there's a time to have fear. And that it is a part of the church being what it needs to be. Grace and fear can, can work together consider it. But then the next time the word great appears is in verse 13 of Acts 5. It says, but the people esteemed, talking about the apostles, the people esteemed them highly. The word esteemed there in the King James, it's the word magnified, I believe, and it is the same root word as we've been looking at. It's the word for, for making great, or they saw them as great. And what I wanted you to think about in Ephesians chapter 2, uh, Ephesians chapter 2 at verse 20, as it talks about it says concerning the church, frankly, it says, Having been built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. I want to, just in these last few seconds that we have, red letter editions of the Bible just drive me crazy. I was reading a verse the other day, uh, the baptism of Jesus. As you have the Lord's, Jesus' words are in red. The voice that comes from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. It's not in red. The, the, the words of God are not in red. Um, it's all from the Holy Spirit, and that's what was happening. That's why the people saw the apostles as great men, because the Holy Spirit, deity, was working through them. And that's why they saw them as great. You might think about it. The foundation, Ephesians 2, verse 20. God bless you. Be a blessing to others. Thank you for studying with us. Hope to see you tomorrow morning.